Once again, we bring you greeting from St. John's African Methodist Episcopal Church, 545 East Butte Street. Another Sunday morning, another day that the Lord has made. Shall we pray, our Father and our God, we thank you now for the miracles of blessing that thou hast bestowed upon us this day. You've been with us all week long, and here we are early this morning. You trust us, we finger love, and we were able see the beauty of a brand new day. We come now to worship you in spirit and in truth. We pray, God, that you would take us out of ourselves and place us graciously in your care. And we proclaim your word. Do what you do best. Heal and deliver. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. I had to call your attention this morning to the book of Acts, chapter number 27. Uh, Let's begin with verse number 22. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. There stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. Lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told to me. Now let's go down to verse number 29. Then fearing lest we should have fallen upon rocks, they cast four anchors out of the stern and wished for the day. And as the shipmen were about to flee out of the ship when they had let down the boat unto the sea, though they would have cast anchors out of the fourth ship. 39. Paul said to the centurion, to the soldier, except the abide in the ship, ye cannot be saved. You cannot be saved except ye abide in the ship. You cannot be saved. I want to talk uh, from this subject. Are you anchored in the Lord? Are you anchored? Are you anchored in the Lord? Check from that familiar story uh, uh, today. Uh, this is a story about struggle by struggling in the storm. The truth of the matter is that this is not the only storm that Paul had to struggle with in the Bible. Amen, somebody. Paul did struggle in many storms. I want to serve notice on you that this is not the only struggle uh, that he had to deal with in the Bible. There are many and many storms, and all of them had to do with him being a follower of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 11, 24, 7, 27 says, From the Jews, and this is Paul talking now, five times I received 40 stripes, minor one. Three times I was shipwrecked a day and a night been in the deep. I've been out in the ocean. I've been left in the deep. Journeys often in pearls of waters and pearls of robbers in perils of my own countrymen. In perils of Gentiles. In perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness. In perils in the sea. In perils among false brethren. In weariness and toil and sleeplessness. Often in hunger and thirst, in fasting, often in cold and nakedness. So then I think you got the message that in the life of Paul, there are no guarantee that our lives will be storm free. Our lives will not be storm free. Truth of the matter is, all of us know something about storms of life. Amen. All have experienced storms. Storm 101. 
that even three points to a storm. There are three points. You, 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 number one, you've been in a storm. You, 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 you're in a storm now. And number three, you're on your way to a storm. Listen to me. Can't speak for you, but I, I took that class early in life. I had all three classes. And, and would probably take them again in life. But what I learned in the storm process is, number one, when you're in a storm, you cannot depend on human wisdom. Amen. If you study this text, uh, Acts in its entirety, especially chapter number 27, you'll discover that these were highly skilled sailors who know what they uh, were supposed to do whenever they faced a storm and they did exactly as they had uh, had been trained to do. And then they executed it perfectly. But, but look where they ended up. Acts 27, 20 says, I, as a follower of Jesus Christ, one of the most difficult things to do when you're going through a storm will be to resist the temptation to handle your storm in the way that you think they should be handled. In other words, Proverbs 3, 5, 6 tells us, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, in all your storms, in all your ways, in all your storms, acknowledge him, and he will direct your path. Amen, somebody. So then, church, if, if, if you try to survive the storm of life based on human wisdom, you'll only see human results. <laughs> And the next thing I want you to look at, uh, I see in the text, when you're in a storm, you can depend on godly wisdom. Amen. Acts 27, 20, Acts 27, 21 through 25 says, Paul was a sailor. He was not a sailor. He was not a sailor. Let, let, let's get that clear. Paul was not a sailor. So he didn't know much about what to do when a ship was in the middle of the sea. He didn't know what to do when the ship was in uh, a heavy storm. Paul was a follower of Jesus Christ and he knew exactly what to do when his life was in the middle of a storm. Y'all got that? Uh -huh. and, 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 and that is to listen to God. He, he, he knew that he wasn't a sailor, he wasn't, in, he wasn't in the Navy, but he was a follower of Christ. So he knew uh, how to listen to God when in trouble. Let's stop there for a moment. And I don't care where, where you, you've been in the last four months. I, I, I don't even know. Uh, I'm not even going to, 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 to deal with that. But, but, but something happened in the last four months. And, and, and I don't know whether you want to address it or not. But, 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 but we are in a major storm. And we've been in one in the last, since the last four months. This coronavirus is like a storm-tossed sea. CDC, the government, the White House, Task Force, etc., etc., etc. All our sailors trying to navigate this storm, this ship, to safety. And the only thing I, I, I believe can do it has been shut out and shut down, and that is the church. The church of God. In fact, uh, uh, in fact, in in line with the text, I feel safe in saying that the ship didn't weather the storm until the Apostle Paul, God, stepped in. Let, let me say that again. They, 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 if you read this entire text, you realize that they didn't weather the storm until uh, God stepped in. Until the Apostle Paul had to have a talk with God. God talked with him and, and so God stepped in. Church, my message is simple today. Never go into a storm of any kind, any kind without God. Make sure you are anchored in the Lord. You, you can always depend on, on God. You can always depend on, on God. And the next thing, the third thing I see, when you're in a storm, you need to drop some anchors. <laughs> 
Yeah, Acts 27, 29 says, these sailors dropped for anchor to stabilize the ship so that they could survive in this terrible storm. They had tried everything else and their last resort was to stabilize the ship and weather the storm and bring it on in to dry land. Now in my mind's eye, I, I believe there are four anchors that every follower of Christ need to have in their everyday life if they, if, if they hope to weather the storms that will come. And oh, by the way, storm will come in your life. Whether you admit it or not, strong will will come. Some of us are right are there right now. Remember what I told you in the beginning of this sermon. If you haven't had a storm in your life and you're not in a storm now, just keep living. The storm is on the way. Let me drop these four anchors and then we'll finish. The first anchor you need is the anchor of prayer. Yeah, write that down, the anchor of prayer. Whenever a storm comes your way, don't, don't let prayer be the last thing that you do. Drop to your knees and pray before God. Pray before you do anything else. Saw a church sign the other day that read, when, it, when all else fail, pray. But, but I, I seem to beg the difference here. I, 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 but I, I'm telling you, according to Matthew 6.33, seek ye first, pray first, and all other things will be added unto you. you. We need to drop, learn how to drop the anchor of prayer. The next thing we need to do is drop the anchor of fellowship. Yeah, that's right. So often I see Christians make the mistake of pulling away from the church. Never they're going through a storm. Listen. Satan knows that, 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 that he can, if he can separate you from the rest of the body of Christ, that you are an easy target for him. <laughs> Hebrew put it this way. Hebrew 10, 25 tells us not to neglect coming together as some people do, but encourage and warn each other. The third anchor I see uh, in the text we need is the anchor of faithfulness. Lord have mercy. Another tragic decision that some folk make is that they stop being faithful to what God has called them to do. Listen to this and see if, see if it makes, makes any sense to you. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Even in this pandemic, you can still be faithful like my son and my grandson are every week to come out here and to make sure that, that you have a good word to hear and to, and to look at on Sunday morning. You have to be faithful, be faithful. Even in the pandemic, in a pandemic, you still can be faithful. Be faithful. Go on and drop the anchor of faithfulness. All of us need to drop the anchor of faithfulness because of the truth be told we have not been faithful to God even before the pandemic. But now we have a chance while we are resting and, 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 and lying around and we, we, we can be become more faithful not only to God but faithful to the family and be faithful to what God has called you to do. The fourth anchor I see in the text is the anchor of hope. Good Lord have mercy. Please ask me 9 and 4, put it this way. He said, there's hope only for the living. For as they say, it's better to be a live dog than a dead lion. <laughs> hope is a small part of a storm, but it produced so much. That's why it is so important to keep hope alive. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust. Did you hear me? The sweeter frame, but holy lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sink, sinking sand. Oh yes, as I get ready, I gotta take my seat now. But I think I made my point. But I just want to wrap it all up and to tell you uh, the truth of the matter. Is Paul was out there. If you read this text, he was out on the Mediterranean Sea 
on a ship was 272 men. The sailors had all the experience, but they had no God. On the other hand, Paul had God, but he had no Navy experience. <laughs> and because Paul knew God in the midst of the storm, 272 men were saved. I'm talking to somebody here today. If you don't know God, at least hang around somebody who does. Come on to the church. Come on back to the church. We, 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 you, can come, you can find God here. Come on back to church. Come on into the church house so that you can get anchored in the Lord. Because in this life, storms will keep on coming in your life. Storm will keep on raging and sometimes it's hard to tell night from day. But still, that hope that lies within is real sure that if we keep our eyes upon the distant shore. I know he'll lead me safely to that blessed place he has prepared. But if the storm don't see yeah, it, yeah. and if the wind keep blowing in my life, my soul, oh, shut y'all, y'all get that. I, I said my soul, uh, my soul has been anchored in, in the Lord. Church, I realize that sometimes in this life we're going to be tossed by the waves and the currents that seem so fierce. But in the word of God, I got an anchor. I'm talking about Rick's now. I got an anchor. I got an anchor that keeps me steadfast, unmovable, despite the tide. But if the storm don't see <laughs> Just in case the wind keep on blowing in, in my life. I'm not worried about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not concerned about it because my soul is anchored in the Lord. And what I want you to do today, the last thing I want you to do today, if you don't do anything else, get anchored in the Lord. Get anchored in Jesus. Get anchored in the Lord so that when trouble comes in your life, you'll be able to to weather any storm. God bless you. Heaven smile upon you. Praise the Lord, everybody. A little song I hope bless your soul. As we going through these turbulent times, this pandemic seems like it just won't go away. It's got to be preaching about the storm of life. This pandemic is nothing but a storm. We just have to pray to God. They prayed up that this too will pass. Here's a little song, and I hope it bless you as much as it blessed me. I've been through the storm and rain, but I made it. I suffer so much heartaches and pain, but I. today. If you have been blessed by the ministry and would like to sow a seed, go to stjohnsame.net and click the donate button, or you may give through Cash App. Also, join us on our Facebook page or on our YouTube and subscribe to us by clicking this. Thank you and may God bless you real good.